This is a moment that I think we can all be proud to be members of the Minnesota House of Representatives and have this privilege. And if this debate has shown nothing else, it's shown and really strengthened the idea that there are good and decent and thoughtful and honorable people on both sides of this issue, on both sides. And I thank you all as colleagues for that. You've all demonstrated that here. So why are we here today? Well, one answer is we're here to talk about freedom and love and commitment between two people. But I think it's more than that. I think it's part of a history uh, that is being written and will continue to be written after today. It's interesting to me that starting in the late 1960s and early 1970s when gays and lesbians started being open and honest about who they were, the initial critique of them was their separateness, was their otherness, was the fact that, so the argument went, they wanted segregation and integration, a separate culture, separate enclaves, separate institutions. And now, decades later, the opposite is happening. Uh, those gay and lesbian brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and friends and colleagues and fellow citizens of ours, uh, they are running towards, not away from, those institutions. They want integration. They want to lead our churches and temples and synagogues as clergy. They want to fight and in some cases are willing to die for our country in the military. And today in Minnesota, as in the past in other states, and hopefully in the future, they simply want to be a part of the most loving and stable and nurturing institution that society knows. They want to be a part of that. They want to elevate it. They want to enrich it. And I don't think we should scorn that. I think we should embrace it. We should embrace their embrace. And I think that's what we have the opportunity to do today. I think slowly as a society we're coming to the realization, some faster than others, that um, those in the GLBT community do not have some sort of condition to be pitied or prayed away. What they have is a God-given orientation which should be celebrated and welcomed. And I think we have an opportunity to do that today as well. So this is about freedom and love and commitment. It's about live and let live, live and let love, you might say. But it's also about compassion. And I know it's most difficult sometimes to be compassionate where the object of the compassion is someone who uh, you maybe don't know. Um, and you don't know who they are or what they are or what they hope for. But in that vein, um, there's a story I love from my own religious tradition about a rabbi who was meeting with his students in a religious school. And the, uh, the rabbi asked his students the question, what is the precise moment when night ends and a new day begins? And one of the students said, the moment when night ends and a new day begins is the moment when there's enough light that I can tell the difference between a cedar tree and an olive tree. And the rabbi said, nope, that's not the answer. Another student said, well, Rabbi, I know the moment when night ends and a new day begins is the moment uh, when there's enough light that I can tell the difference between uh, a sheep and a goat. And the rabbi said, no, that is not the answer. The rabbi said, uh, uh, the moment when uh, night ends and a new day begins is the moment when you look into the face of a stranger and uh, see the face of your brother. Until that moment, no matter what time it is, it's still night. But at that moment, that's when the new day begins. I like the sound of that, a new day. I hope we can all go there together, and I urge you to vote yes.